Hello, and welcome to my tutorials of Blitz Basic, or just Basic in itself. Uh, what I'm going to teach you will work with Blitz Plus, Blitz 3D, and Blitz Basic. I also believe it also works with just the Basic compiler, just called Basic. Uh, the comp compiler I'll be using is uh, Blitz 3D. I enjoy using this one because it works really fast. It does what it needs to do. Uh, however, like I said, this uh, what I'm about to teach on here will also work with Blitz Basic and Blitz Plus. Uh, okay, so let's begin. Uh, anyway, this uh, tutorial was created to help out uh, one of my friends who uh, is a little curious of how uh, Blitz Basic works and you know a couple tricks you can do with it. It's one of my favorite things to use for uh, making games, and I recommend this one if uh, you don't want to take the time to learn C++. I won't be uh, teaching C++ mainly because I am not a professional at that, but I'm neither a professional at this either. However, okay, so this is how I start off my programs. You can start off differently, you know, not everyone does it the same way, but this is how I do it. I start by putting the title of uh, my program. This one will be calling it Demo, and uh, I think this is the best way to start a program, mainly because I found that if you put this app title below anything else it won't show up on the title so next I show my graphics and this is the size of the screen I'll go over these in just a second so let's do 1000 by 768 alright I put in two code quickly two uh, commands actually the app title what it does is like I said it will name the title of the program uh, this is demo, so like here, Blitz 3D, see how Blitz 3D shows up. Uh, demo will show up in our program, and also at the bo at the bottom, excuse me, where the tabs show up, it'll say demo. Uh, that's what that does. Uh, what the graphics do is it sets the resolution of the screen. Uh, the most commonly used uh, resolution these days is uh, 1,200 or 1,024 by 768. I used to think it was 800 by 600, but one of my students from college actually uh, corrected me by looking it up in my statistics. It is this, and I believe it. 99% uh, of computers can run that. 33 or more of that percentage can actually run a higher uh, resolution. So, I mean, it's up to you on what type of uh, program you want to create. Maybe you want you want just to support those higher resolutions, and maybe you're trying to push for a higher resolution so that way people would buy computers with higher resolutions. I mean, it's up to you. Uh, I actually use strange type of resolutions like this. Uh, that works too. You can create your own type of resolution. You can even create a resolution that goes beyond your screen. That's just amazingly big. Uh, going back to this real quick, uh, 1024 by 768, if you put these right here, uh, what the zero is, is that's the color bytes, I believe. Uh, that's usually set to zero because no matter what you put, it's always gonna go by the default of what your uh, what type of colors your computer can handle. So I always keep that zero, and I, don't, I hardly ever explain it. People ask me what it means. Uh, basically, don't worry about it. Just put zero. It does it for you. Uh, what this does is it has different uh, types of modes, and these are comments right here. This semicolon right here. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what it is. One equals full screen uh, 2 will equal uh, windowed screen yeah windowed screen and 3 equals uh, windowed screen but you can adjust it adjustable if that's a word anyway um let me uh, demonstrate what they all do real quick. Uh, I know for a fact that with Blitz Plus, uh, number three just puts it, I believe, full screen. It doesn't do the windowed screen, which is a shame. Uh, so, Blitz 3D does. That's one of the things I do like. And no matter which one of these I use, except for a full screen, uh, Blitz 3D puts in the X, the windowed, and the minimize at the corner. Uh, unfortunately, Blitz Plus doesn't, and I used to really like Blitz Plus. Uh, 
However, Blitz 3D seems to do the same thing, but better. All right, let me just demonstrate these real quick. Uh, we run it. Black, uh, that's with the one. Command is ended. Uh, that reminds me. Make sure your debug is enabled, so that way, if you make any mistake, this will actually tell you exactly where the mistake is. Very helpful. Two is windowed screen. There you go. And thanks to the debug enable, you have your Blitz debugger right here. It'll tell you exactly where the problems are and where it is in the code. This is very helpful. Trust me. Okay, as I said before, demo is the title of the application. Demo is right here. And while I'm explaining that, let me set up my keyboard. I need my on screen keyboard. So I can. Okay, there we go. Uh, minimize it. Uh, anyway, uh, it's like I said, Blitz 3D has this right here the minimize and the X. Uh, unfortunately, Blitz Plus does not. And I believe Blitz Basic only shows these is if you do the window adjustable screen. Anyway, so remember 2 allows you to do a windowed screen. Let's get rid of this. Come on. Uh, that means it's not full screen. You can move it around. You can do all sorts of crazy things with it. Quit coming up. Alright, exit out. And now number 3, which is actually one of my favorites, but I don't like using it if I'm using a larger resolution, is window screen. You can adjust it. It starts with a small screen, but you can actually adjust the screen to how you like just like a normal Windows application screen. Minimize, open, close. All right. Uh, so that only works. This extra part only works is if you're using a normal resolution as uh, 800 by 600, 640 by oh, I forget the second one. Oh, what? Well, whatever. It's hardly used. Any. Oh, 640 by 480, and a thousand two or a thousand twenty four by seven hundred sixty eight and I know uh for instance my uh, laptop uh a thousand three hundred sixty six by seven hundred sixty eight those all can use these extra commands right here uh however like I said I like using that thousand by uh six hundred because it fits well it's way too big it fits my screen just for perfectly there you go, a little widescreen screen. I, I like it. And um, anyway, that's not, let's get rid of this because we need to explain this later. Uh, what the semicolon does, and this print right here, is a comment, and the compiler will completely ignore it. You can put whatever you want here. You can put you can put gibberish here. Uh, excuse me. However you spell it, gibberish, and it won't affect your uh, your program at all. It's comments that let you know what things do, like a block of code that may be clustered. You might want to break it up with comments and you know explain each part so that way you can adjust it later or find your bugs quickly and easily. Okay, uh, there's all sorts of different colors. With Blitz Plus, I forget what the comments look like. I know they're not gold. I think they're green. Blue or not, Blitz Plus. Uh, anything that turns blue on my screen is commands. On Blitz Plus, they're actually gold. They turn gold. Those are commands. They cannot become numbers or variables because they have their own set of instructions that do specific things. For instance, app title puts the title of the, of the executable. Uh, graphics sets the resolution and the type of screen you want to put up. Uh, a white text like this is a variable. Oop. All over the place. Oh, I don't need to know how to spell it. But anyway, however, I'm very bad at spelling. But anyway, hello would be a variable. And we can make it equal something like a thousand. Uh, whatever you want to equal, that's how it's gonna that's what it's gonna equal. Anyway, uh, moving on. Let's go into loops. Loops is one of the most important things in my opinion to uh, uh, video games and programs. That's what makes things work and make things run. Uh, the while loop is one of my favorites, and this is how I make my uh, game run is off a while loop. We'll keep on looping, in other words. While, and the way this works is let's put in a variable real quick end game equals oh, no, zero. Alright, now let's explain this step by step. While, while end game equals zero, whatever's in between the while loop will happen. 
and it won't actually the computer won't go past this until end game equals zero then it'll end uh, what this uh, when is is that's the ending of the loop each loop has its own different type of ending uh, this lets the computer know when this loop's gonna finish when to stop reading code and the computer will only read it is if this part is true so since we didn't define what end game was earlier in the in the loop end game already equals zero so if we were to run this program right now it would run endlessly because there's no way this can equal anything else than zero so I advise you not to run the program right now or else yeah, there's no way to escape it unless you do the whole uh, control alt delete escape method and go to the task manager and unblock your file or your whatever it is you're using but anyway um yeah so now what we have to do is we have to make this equal something other than zero and that's what this whole tutorial for this next 15 minutes will be based on is how to uh, use loops and how to destroy them so this loop is already in effect luckily I have my X key right here so I can just exit out that way other than that there's no way else to get rid of it there's no key I can push put on my on screen keyboard click all sorts of crazy things uh, nothing will happen uh, so there alright so let me teach you a new thing that you must get used to and make it your best friend is go to the command reference right here command reference it'll be different in blitz plus and blitz basic but same name command reference and the scan code interactive is one thing it's called or you can go to the scan code uh, where it just has a list what I know in blitz plus it's called the interactive scan code picker and you select the key you want and it'll tell you scan code and these scan codes turn your uh, keyboard keys into numbers Everything in programming is all ran off numbers, just adding and subtracting from each other, and dividing and multiplying, but mainly adding one or more, subtracting. So anyway, let's do spacebar in this case. Make it easy, and let's create a variable called spacebar. Since it doesn't change into any color, it means it won't do anything. It's no command or anything. It's actually a variable. Anything that's white is a variable. And we're going to make it equal 57, whoops, uh, not 657, but 57, because as we go back here, that's what it equals. Now, cool. This does absolutely nothing right now. You need to make it do something. So we're going to introduce a new command and a loop, the if loop. And if loop is very easy to get used to and one of my uh, favorite loops to use to make things happen. Now the computer will only read the if loop is if it's true. It's kind of hard to explain because a bunch of ifs going on, but anyway. And the if is end with an end if, pretty easy. So end if, so if, and then end if. Some people even like to space it out. Doesn't even matter. But I like to combine it just like that. All right. So anyway, if key hit, which is another command we're reducing, space bar, and yeah, that's it. So if the player was to push the space bar, which is already defined here, which the scan code is 57, uh, whatever's in between this loop will become true. And what we're going to do is we're going to make end game equal anything besides zero. You can make this equal anything but zero if you want it to end the loop. Uh, in this case, we can make it equal a huge number, just like that, and it'll end the loop. Uh, so anyway, what key hit does is it has to, it's actually something like this, let's create a new comment. And let's actually enlarge this so it's a little easier for some people to see, instead of having to put your glasses on. Alright, uh, key hit, in parentheses, something has to go inside here, and it has to be a scan code. It could be either a variable like itself, or it could be a number. I could put 57 in here instead of spacebar and still do the same thing. The reason why I put spacebar in between there as a variable or whatever that equals 57 is that way while I'm looking through my code and say I don't remember all my scan codes, which I don't, I know quite a bit because I've been using them quite, quite often, like the escape key is one, um, I know exactly what key I need to hit to make whatever in between the code true. So anyway, let's run the code real quick so I can demonstrate how this works. Put my on 
screen keyboard, which is pretty awesome. I like, I, you know, I'm new to using this, but it's awesome. Space bar, program has ended, just like magic. All right, awesome. Uh, let me check how we're doing on time. All right, so that's how the while and if loops work. Uh, I believe I'm out of time, but quickly I'll go over how computers read this. What the computer will do is start from the top, just like reading a book. It'll start from the top uh, left hand corner and read to the right. And it'll only read things once unless it's told to. So it's going to only read this once. It's going to create that as the name of the executable. It's going to set the resolution. It's going to, uh, it's going to actually uh, store this variable right here. It's going to put this into recognition. Since it's true, it's going to actually read whatever's inside it. It's not going to read whatever's inside the if loop until it becomes true. Uh, we can make this equal negative one, and it'll still work the same. Anyway, and so anyway, the computer reads from the top and goes down to the bottom. Uh, one thing it also will do is, uh, if you push the space bar just fast enough, whatever is below it, the computer will actually just end the whole thing, the whole program, right away, and not even be able to finish off reading the rest of it. And that's how programming works. And, C++ and Blitz Plus. However, a compiler reads things just so fast, you might not even be able to push the spacebar as fast as the compiler would be able to read the entire program. So, unless you're that quick. But I don't even think that's possible. But that's just a way of explaining it. Uh, thank you for watching this. I'll be going over how to draw images onto the screen and make them move in the next tutorial.